Hello everyone, it's your meadow half of the day. How are y'all you how are y'all you guys doing? <laughs> um, this is part two of the Goomba movement tutorial. Uh, in the first episode we just made the basic movement with the Goombas walking around. However, I forgot to mention quite a few things. Well, actually, I forgot to mention one thing, and then three other questions came up, which I need to address. So this episode is going to be all of that. In this episode, we will figure out how to make the Goombas animate, because many people asked about that. And for good reason, I should have gone over that, but I didn't, so, you know, animation. We are also, well, somebody also asked about collisions between Goombas, which is a good question. And I need to go over that. And that was actually really hard to figure out, but I finally got it. And also, we're going to go over, ding, 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 slopes. How to make Goombas go up slopes, which is really easy. So this video shouldn't be too, too, too long. But, you know, we'll see. You can just look down there and see how long the video is and see whether I kept up the pace or whether I got lazy or I even got slow. Alright, so here's a, this thing you're looking at is a test engine that I made. I was trying to make the Goombas collide with each other. <laughs> As you can see, it wasn't entirely uh, good. The Goombas start fighting if they get into the same space, like those two. Eventually they'll make it out, but you know, they have to beat each other up a little bit. Their animations, however, are working well, and the slope movement is working swimmingly. Just the collisions were a problem, but I just figured that out, so you are going to bear or enjoy the fruits of my labor. Oh, you guys are lucky. So this is the engine we made last time. And nothing about, I didn't change anything really. All the events are the same. The only thing I did change is I put in some really basic animations. So just four frames. You can play it, he just, you know, walks. Very simple. You can do that, you can pause the video and do that right now if you want. They don't have to be good in any way, they just have to be there. Alright, so let's uh, go in here and make some animations. Or, run the animations. So let's start a new group called Annie for animations. And also, let's go into the Goomba itself and add a new value and call it Annie Frame. Alright, just leave that there, don't put anything in there. And we're going to say, actually let's go up in here. Remember when we made this engine, if we didn't put uh, to change this animation to stopped, we'd have all these hitboxes going around. And so by making its animation to stopped, you know you have that nice mask over the hitbox. However, we can also use that to change its animation frame. So we can do that right in here. Let's change its animation frame to, you guessed it, any frame. And just leave that there, that's all you need to do. Now, let's see what happens. Nothing. That's because its animation frame is zero, which corresponds to frame one in these animations. Multimedia Fusion 2 is uh, zero based in the animation frames, which means the first frame is actually frame zero. Even though it says frame one here, it logs it in as frame zero. This is frame one, two, and three. Zero, one, two, three. So the last frame is actually going to be one less than the actual frame number it says there. So keep that in mind. We're going to go in here on this event and say every every 20th or 20 milliseconds, 20 hundredths of a second, it's going to add to any frame one. Now let's see what happens. Alright, did you see that? Let me start it over real quick. So they do a few frames and then they stop. Well, why is that? Well, it's because it's going, alright, so I'm going to add one to any frame. Okay, any frames one, I'm going to switch to frame two. Any frames two, I'm going to switch to frame three. Any frames three, I'm going to switch to frame four. Any frames four, I'm going to switch to frame four. Any frames five, I'm going to switch to frame four. And, if, and you, you know, you get the pattern. So you need to go in here and say, make it loop uh, manually. Say, when any frame, when it's animation frame is greater than, remember, three because it's 0, 1, 2, 3. When it's greater than 3, when it goes past that frame, it's going to immediately set it to frame 1 again. And so you have this nice loop. See? 
we already covered the first topic. Animation finished. Of course, if you have more frames, you just do the same thing with the total frames minus one. And set it back, and you can make it faster by lowering this value like to 14, and their steps will be slightly faster. Like that. See? Easy. Easy. Alright, now. Dun, 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 dun. Slopes. Next thing to do is slopes. Now slopes are actually pretty easy, but we need some slopes first, so let's uh let's do that. Make a backdrop and you know just draw it out. So I hope you guys are doing good. Today is December twenty first. It is the end of the world. Not really. And it's very cold and uh very snowy out where I am. So I'm glad to be inside making a tutorial. I'm sure you guys, you guys are glad for that too. It's apparently 700 people like to watch my tutorials, which is darn amazing. If I, uh, well, I'm just amazed. I'll just leave it at that. So I made some slopes. Don't forget to change them both to obstacles. I just made one, cloned it, turned it around, put it over there. And if we run it now, we'll see that they just crash into the side and go back. Well, let's fix that. Um, if you wanna, well, I made a tutorial on slopes a while back, which I actually rewatched to teach myself how to do it again. And I explained it pretty well in that video, so, uh, you can go back, I'll put a link to it right here, where my mouse is, uh, circling. Just click there, it'll take you to the slopes video, and you will see how to make slopes. I'm just going to basically do the exact same thing I did in that video for these Goombas, which is pretty easy. I'll move slopes. I'm going to start this loop slopes. I'm going to start it Damir two times. Okay, well, on loop slopes, when it's overlapping a backdrop, we're going to set its Y position to its Y position. Minus one. I'm going to kind of fly through this because uh, you can watch that other video. When it's not overlapping a backdrop, we're going to stop loop. Slopes. And on loop slopes. When. Compare two general values. Loop index. Of slopes. Is equal to one, which is the second loop because this is also zero based. We're going to set its Y position to its Y position, plus two. All right, and we also remember need to move this below the slopes. And we also, don't forget, well, let me see what happens if you do forget. Um, for some reason that first Goomba and the second one, we jumped. Well, you know, it's because it's messing up because we didn't do this set all these under this and then it'll work fine it's now it's individualized all right you know that's slopes that's it that's that's all there is to it easy easy it's easy man you got this you guys got this let's see how we're doing on time okay wow not even 10 minutes are you serious i am making good time for once Alright, so now collisions with Goombas. So, uh, when I did this before, I did some crazy stuff. Like one time I made an object. Oh, this is one of the methods I did. I made an object and made it so that when the Goombas came in contact with each other, like, boom. It was like, I made this thing so it looped in between the two objects that collided, like spread a value, one and zero, and then spread or did a loop and then added up their values and divided it by two to get an object right between them that made them collide with the object and turn around and destroy the object like that's how that's the extent to which I went to the extent to which I went to why are these on the line to uh, make this tutorial so now you get to bear the fruits of my labor or eat the fruits of my labor which I am bearing for you right now and do it the easy way because I just figured this out. So, uh, just make an event and say when uh, Goomba collides with Goomba. Alright. And we're going to go in here and say... Oh, actually, before we do anything there, go in here and add another value. And put 
Col X. Collision X. I'm gonna say, when you go in here, uh, when Goomba collides with Goomba, we're gonna set it so. It's Col X to its current X position. Alright. Uh, that probably doesn't make any sense to you. Well, let's make it make sense. Copy this one, this event, where the Goomba collides with a wall on the bores when it's hitting an object. And we're going to paste it right here. Now we're going to replace this, go in here and replace, and say when its X position is equal to its Col X. So what we just did there, oh, and also go in here and set its Col X to negative 2000. And go back out here and set it to negative 2000. Now, why did we just do that? Um, let me explain right before I fin- Well, let me finish it up and then explain. Uh, copy this into the one where it's not hitting a wall and say, and when it's different than it's Col X. So, what I just did is said, if we zoom in here, when a Goomba collides with another Goomba, da da da, boom. It's going to set a value inside it, this Col X value right here. It's going to set that value to its current X position. Now, in the in the events when uh, when it's not equal to its current Col X, which is negative two thousand, which by the way is so far over that I can't even scroll over to it, like it's way off the screen. Um, when it's not equal to that, it's just going to carry on as normal, you know, just move around. However, when its Col X is equal to its X position, it's going to stop and turn around and set its Col X back to negative 2000 just to, uh, you know, negate the whole thing. So it only collides once. Let's see how it works? Yeah, it works. Well, I mean, if these Goombas didn't start like on top of each other, it would work pretty well. So let's try it again. Ta-da! So, uh... Yeah, so it works perfectly, and it's really simple, you know? Best of both worlds. They all collide, even if you have, you know, if we duplicate this and get... Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da. And put them all there. Oh, well, that Goomba fell inside the other Goomba, which isn't good, but, uh, you know, <laughs> things happen. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. We, we done it, man. We done it. If you get too many Goombas in a space, they'll, uh, start doing that. Which, I know isn't, like, awesome or anything. But eventually they'll all settle in. Also, it's unlikely they'll ever have that many Goombas in the same space. Unless you're crazy and just litter them, whoops, litter them all over the place, which I wouldn't put past you guys. Uh, if you really want it, I'll try and figure out how to make it so they don't climb out of the pit. But, you know, until then, I'm just going to say it's okay. Because I spent like four hours on this already. So, that's that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I will most likely reply to you. And, uh, yeah, that's it for the Goomba movement. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope you learned a lot. And I will see you next video. Alright, have a good day, and I love you guys. Goodbye.